My name is Lola Arias. I am the director of REAS. Um, REAS is part of the forum section of Berlinale. Hello and welcome to the 38th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wuttig and today I'm here with Lola Arias to talk about the film Reas. Hello Lola, Hi. very glad to have you here. Thanks for coming. Um, and thank you very much for Reas. It, the film made me very happy <laughs> <laughs> because you transform the setting of a Buenos Aires prison into a place for trans and cis identities to celebrate life and empowerment. Um, maybe you could start with telling us how the idea for the film came to you. Well, I was uh, doing workshops in the CESA prison for women uh, since 2019. And when I started to do these workshops for theater and cinema, I started to be interested in working uh, with people uh, inside the jail in a project and originally I wanted to shoot a film inside of the prison mm -hmm. while the people were doing their sentence. But then the, con the pandemic came and the prisons were closed and nobody could enter anymore, the workshops were cancelled and I started to think also about the idea of making a film with people who had been in jail in a former prison, so more like a kind of reenactment of yeah. a past experience. And actually, it was a essential decision because the freedom I had to do this film um, was because I had also the possibility to do it outside mm -hmm. in, a, in a place where there was not so much control because actually in the prison I wouldn't have been able to do what I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, nevertheless, these people really experienced um, years of being in confinement and actually they were um, happy to go back to this place, but in another way. So yeah. to be able to relive this experience, but having the control of what happens yeah. and yeah. not being oppressed by the system. And actually the idea of making the musical came from the fact that when I started working with them, I realized like bodies in prison are under so much control. You know, you have a choreography of movements. You are yeah. being counted all the time. You have to walk in a certain way, in a certain space you can move and others not. So actually to free these bodies and to let them dance and sing was actually to create a space of yeah. joy and freedom inside of a very oppressive yeah. institution. Yeah. That's, that's very beautiful because it seems like the, the, the making of the film itself had a transformative aspect mm -hmm. for your actors and actresses in that sense. Um, one of the things that I really loved about the film was how great the chemistry between your performers was. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us a little bit about your your casting process or how you how you yeah. found your actors and actresses? It was a long process because actually 
the whole process, project started in 2019. And some people I met when I did these first workshops inside of the prison, and some people I met during years um, after that, when I started an investigation and interviews to people who had been in jail. So it has been like many years of interviews and meeting people, and then I did several instances of workshops, mm -hmm. um, music and uh, theater workshops to try out ideas. So actually the group was consolidated during these different instances of work. Some people met before in jail, for example, Nacho, the trans man, and Steffi, they had a band together in jail. It was called Sin Control, No Control. And this band is also an um, inspiration for the man that is playing in the film. Yeah. You know that they transform a cell into a rehearsal space. Yeah. And this actually really happened to them. And some people met in the shooting and in the process of making the film. Like Shoseli didn't know Nacho mm -hmm. before the two main characters. And Actually, it was very magical the way the community of people got together and the way everybody was, in a way, um, supporting each other. Mm -hmm. Not only between them, but also, also with the crew, with the film crew. Yeah. It was a very warm team and very supportive. And this kind of um, empowerment came from them to us and from us to them. I think there was a very, a very really we had a lot of fun, yeah. even though yeah. <laughs> we were in this awful space, which is really oppressive yeah. because it has this history. You know, this was a real prison where yeah. people had yeah. been tortured and murdered and oh, horrible things happened. But the way that we were working, the fact that we were actually playing music and singing and dancing and telling these stories and being together, I think made a kind of change in yeah. this. Yeah. A space, something very deep. We we used to joke that the whole like the ghosts of the prison were coming oh. out <laughs> to dance with us. That there was something very, yeah, ma yeah. magical about yeah. the project in itself. I can imagine that the memory of the prison was somehow overwritten by them returning to yes. such a place mm. and kind of transforming it into a place of joy. In that yes. sense, what what was it like? for the bandmates to get together again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really nice because the, the Nacho and Steffi, they, they were playing together. But the others, they never played with each other. So they had to actually create an ensemble and rehearse. And, and I mean, and we discovered actually that many of them had a lot of a musical talent. I mean, yeah. uh, there's also Paulita, the woman who is singing on the phone. Mm -hmm. She's uh, from Peru and she was a former cumbia singer in a band. So it was interesting because they all come from different backgrounds. They have, they like different music, mm -hmm. but they came together uh, to work on this uh, band and these songs. And it was a lot of, yeah, fun also to, yeah. to create this band and to create the songs with them. I did the songs together with two musicians, Ulises Conti, mm -hmm. who is a composer, and Mylen Panconin, who is also an amazing singer. So it was a very collaborative project. Yeah. Uh, many people were involved and yeah. yeah. I was about to ask because I was completely blown away by the performances mm -hmm. because you know th no matter what what style of music they were in whether it was electronical it was a dance performance um, so you worked together with performance artists to, to create the kind of movement? Yeah, we worked, I worked together with a choreographer, mm -hmm. Andrea Cervera, who is also a person who worked inside of the prison, making workshops for dance in the prison. And she also worked a lot with the trans community. So she was very much involved in the voguing scene. Mm -hmm. um, so people who actually have already a contact with, uh, with these kind of projects. And yeah, the musicians, this choreographer, there was a big team. And the choreographies, we created it with them. And the music, actually the fact that the music is so heterogeneous, like mm -hmm. it's a kind of popery of cumbia, rock, yeah. pop, whatever, it's because this is the music they like, like yeah. the genres yeah. they like. And we didn't want to impose a gen like a, yeah, a kind of music um, that, that we like. We thought, okay, we have to, in a way, make arrangements or create music that uh, that belongs to them, that yeah. they feel comfortable yeah. with. So it was a challenge also to find the right music for yeah. each scene and for each character. But it was also, 
Yeah, a lot of fun to also compose a cumbia, I mean, you yeah. know, like I've never done this. <laughs> but I really had fun, you yeah. know, in the moment when they are, um, there is this kind of uh, cumbia song that they sing to the guards mm -hmm. when they are being asked to come in a row yeah. for the yeah. count counting. Yeah. And then they start to sing to them, me grita, siempre al despertar. Yeah. And yeah. it's a very, it's a funny song in a way because it's about this, um, strong and difficult relationship with the guards mm -hmm. that it's a very, I mean, that is a relationship that it's, um, there are many things that are happening between um, people who are in jail and people who are guards in jail. Sometimes there is violence, sometimes there is oppression, sometimes there is also, there are also relationships of yeah. friendship, some kind of also, there are love stories. <laughs> I heard about these love stories yeah. between guards and people in jail. So there's a lot of things that happen between them. And the fact that they could sing a song to the guards was something that actually they were having a lot of fun with. Yeah. And actually, there is this word that they sing. They say bicha. Bicha is something it's impossible to translate, but it's the way the people in jail call the guards. Yeah. And it's a bit of, um, let's say, um, a, provoc a strong okay. word, it's not like very <laughs> sympathetic, but in a way what I like is that the, there is the song, there is something about also acknowledging this dependence of these mm -hmm. two parts and actually in my experience of interviewing also guards who had worked in uh, prisons, um, people who are in jail and people who also do the, who are the guards, sometimes they come from the same neighborhoods, from the same background, so yeah. it's really like, um, sometimes they know each other from even before so yeah, it's yeah. a it's a very complex uh, relationship yeah. so i did i didn't want to only show one side of this yeah. relationship to yeah. make uh, make it more yeah uh, complex yeah you also have that dialogue in the film of two guards sort of mm -hmm. going okay well my prison experience was this and i actually had a lot of well not fun but i had relationships there i got along well mm -hmm. with the inmates and the other one going, the prison system broke me. Exactly, you know? because this scene I think is very important because actually there was one point when I thought about like working with also former guards mm -hmm. uh, or people who are like working in the penitentiary system. Mm -hmm. But then I decided, no, it must be them, yeah. people who had been in confinement who represent both roles. Yeah, yeah. But it was interesting because within, um, within them, not all of them had the same experience with, yeah. The, yeah. with the guard. So um, Laura, she says, we were friends with the guards and they were, I mean, I felt part of it and they were clapping me when I yeah. came out. And, yeah. and the other one said, what are you talking about? <laughs> they like, yeah, yeah, they broke me, they destroyed me. Yeah. There was, there was so, so much violence. So actually, I think it's important to show these perspectives uh, and not to deny any of the experiences they had because it's, then you bring the complexity of the whole system into life. I yeah. mean, and yeah. through them, because actually they know what they experience. I yeah. cannot tell what happened to them. Yeah, and that translated really well in the film. Um, there's different scenes in the film where the sort of fictional narrative kind mm -hmm. of shifts into a more documentarial aspect. Uh, for example, when uh, Nacho starts the, the dialogue in the wrong way, or they are talking about the film set or the, 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 mm -hmm. the former prison, which is now transformed into a film set. Um, what was the idea behind having these moments where sort of the, the narrative is sort of broken or sort of changes? For me, it was important that in this film, I mean, everything is scripted. Mm -hmm. I wrote the script from the beginning to the end. And there is this fictional frame, mm -hmm. like a girl enter the prison, a newcomer, mm -hmm. uh, she finds out people inside. There is a relationship with Nacho, the trans man. They kind of fall in love. There is a very flirty relationship during the whole uh, film. And things happen, and then she comes out. I mean, basically, it's a very like easy, let's say, red line that creates a fictional frame. But inside, all the stories that you here are their stories and this yeah. is the documentary aspect of it yeah. nothing that they say is an invention of yeah, me yeah, yeah. 
Um, but I found it interesting also that during the shooting there were moments where actually in, like moments of improvisation or being lost or something that happened that was also happening for real yeah. got like interfering the fiction yeah. Yeah. I created. So actually I like very much the scene when Nacho and Rosalie are flir flirting. Basically, yeah. he is reading her hand and saying, now you will fall in love, of yeah. whom, of yeah. me, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and then at some point, they are so much into the flirt that they lose their lines. <laughs> and then they are like, oof, we, we fucked it up. Like, we made a mistake. And we were still shooting, and we had so much fun, like, seeing this moment where they were realizing that they made a mistake, yeah. but they kept on flirting. Yeah. So actually, <laughs> I thought it's really nice because actually you don't know anymore if this relationship between them is a fictional relationship yeah. or it's real. Or it's, what yeah. is happening between yeah. them? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah, that's why I kept these moments of somehow things that were out of control in a way, like they were not written by me. There were things that really happened between them. Yeah. And I've, I've, it's incre incredibly beautiful that you left it in the film because mm. it shows so much how great the relationships between mm. the, the actors was and how well the film was a transformative experience for them as well, mm. you know. Um, okay, thank you so <laughs> much, Lola, for, for coming here and for talking to us. And thank you so much again uh, for the film. I found it an incredibly beautiful experience. I just want to say one more thing, which yes. I think is interesting. I'm continuing working with them because mm -hmm. you know I'm a theater director. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I have 20 years of experience in theater and only two films. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, when I'm finishing Berlinale, I'm going back to Buenos Aires and I'm going to do a theater play with them, with six of the casts. Wow. So the project continues yeah. and this uh, theatre piece will be about the time after prison. It will open in Buenos Aires and then we will go to different festivals and it will come to Berlin too. Wow, nice. <laughs> so this is the first part but there is a first uh, part two coming. <laughs> Can you already tell us sort of the time frame when you will? So I mean, actually the piece will open in May in Buenos Aires, end of May, then we will have an opening in Avignon Festival in July and then I think in September we will come to Gorky Theatre to show the nice. piece. Wow, <laughs> okay so September of this year. You can Gorky see Theater. the part two. <laughs> yeah, what, what will be the name of the play? We are still it with the A by Titel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, right. For now it's called uh, Jail Rock, but Jail I don't Rock. know. <laughs> nice. Yes, we will see. All right, thank you so much, Lola, thank you. for taking the time. And uh, it was a real pleasure to talk to you. Super, thanks, okay. thank you.